Alrighty. Well, before we get into the message, I just want to thank you guys. And I spent the Thanksgiving at the Mabe's house, and it was really, truly a blessing. And I just want to thank you guys, the whole church family, for allowing me to be part of your family this holiday season. And it was really a blessing. And really, I'm just so thankful to be here. And I tell you guys each and every day, but I really am thankful for the opportunity to be here and to be the young adults pastor and to learn from Joe and thank you for this opportunity. And for some, Thanksgiving is a time of being spent with family and friends and just remembering all the good times that we have gone through throughout the year. But I want to tackle it this morning about how do you have Thanksgiving through the difficult times? Because we all go through difficult times and for some we kind of just brush it off to to the side and we forget about them. Or we're like, oh, okay, we can put on the face and we can put on the mask and we can get through this difficult times. And so my question to start off this morning is, when it comes to your challenges in your life, do you allow them to reign supreme over you or do you look for joy in the midst of them? For me, how I face challenges and how I go through things, it, I kind of like to process things by myself. I kind of like to take control. I like to be someone who just ends up just when I'm facing a problem, I just want to be by myself. I don't want to be around people. But that's not, that's okay, but you have to be around people. You have to be around community. You have to be around fellowship because it brings out joy. And so a question that I have for you guys, are you looking for the White House or are you running thinking you can handle the storm because it's not that bad right now? When we face these storms, are we looking for the joy? Are we looking for God in the midst of them? Or are we think that we can handle it all in ourselves? Because for me, I fall in both of these circumstances. I fall in the place where I look for the joy, but only when the problem gets too big. When these small problems, I like to face them on my own. I do. Because I'm like, I want the control. I want to be in control. And so for me, what I do is I'm like, all right, God, you got this one, you got that one, I'll take this one, I got this one. And so what I do is I end up walking and I end up trying to figure it out on my own. And then for me, I end up getting more stressed out or my anxiety starts to hit up or I lose my joy in the midst of it. And so for me, it's realizing through this time of being someone who looks for the White House, looks for the joy in every circumstance, whether it be big, whether it be small, whether it be just even the good times as well, praising God and thanking Him for all things. And the first scripture that we're going to look at is 1 Thessalonians 5.18, where it says, Give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Pastor Joe mentioned it as he was praying. But are we giving thanks to Jesus in all things that we go into? The good, the bad, the ugly, the... Are we praising Him in every single circumstance? Because He is bigger than our problems. He's bi- he is the solution to all our problems. But when these problems arise, are we going to Him or are we running away in the corner saying, Okay, problem, you're bigger and we're just piling the, the stones of the problems on top of one another, waiting for help when help's been there all along. It's our friends, it's our family, it's a small, still voice in our head telling us right from wrong. But do we choose to listen to those people, or, do we choo- or are we choosing just to be by ourselves as we face these problems alone? God didn't intend us to be alone. He didn't create us to be alone. He created us to be in fellowship with one another. And so when we're facing these problems, are we facing them alone? Are we looking for the light and the joy that has always been with us? For me, when I face problems, it comes to a time where I need to let go. I need to lay them down at Jesus' feet Take a step back and say, here, these are my problems. I'm not picking them back up. I'm walking this way or I'm walking straight because I know my God is with me as I face these problems. Amen. And he is with you as you face your problems as well. 
He doesn't leave you nor forsake you. He's always with you. That means everything, whether it be a little thing or a big thing that happens in your life, are you giving thanks to the Lord for the simple things or do you get busy with the life that you, that you get caught up in the world around you? Are you getting so caught up in the world around you that you are forgiving to give thanks to the Lord? I know for me, when I get busy, there are times where the Lord becomes an afterthought. I'm just going to be upfront and honest with you guys. Because we get so caught up in, oh, we have to go to our job. We have friends. We have family. We have all these things that we have to take care of that we sometimes forget the most important. And so when we get stressed out, we get these problems that keep going in and out of our lives. We forget to thank God in the midst of them. Because the truth of the matter, are you looking for the hope that is in your... Are you looking for the truth... Hold on. Let me start again. Sorry about that. Are we allowing things to steal our joy because you can't seem to find the happiness that is all around you? Or are you looking for the truth that is in Jesus and the hope that is in Jesus and does your heart reflect it? Because are we praising God amidst the difficult times or are we just allowing God to be over here when we just thank Him in the good times? I don't want to be someone who only thanks God in the good times. I want to thank Him in the difficult times because He is bigger than my problems. He is bigger than my circumstances because He's always been faithful in my life. Growing up, I grew up in a household that was loving. It was... But it had its difficult times. It was always some t- there was difficult times of paying bills. There was always a financial thing. But the Lord's provision always came through. And so when I think of Thanksgiving and when I think of these difficult times that I go through, my hope is always in the Lord because He's been faithful in my life. He's always been the anchor. He's always been that stronghold saying, Hey, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah, the joy might not happen, or you might not see it right then and there, but I'm here with you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I got you. I called you from when you were little, and I'm going to be with you. The working that I'm going to do in your life, it hasn't stopped, and I'm not giving up on you. So when you go through those hard times where you lose your hope, or you think, God, why is this happening to me? I just want you to remember that the Lord is with you everywhere. <sighs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but to me, Thanksgiving, it just reminds me of how faithful God has been in my life. Since when I was a little kid, through my middle school ages, through my high school ages, and even now, He's blessed me with you guys. He's blessed me with a family that's taken me in and being has made me feel like home since day one. He has been with my family back home. He's been with my family everywhere. He's been with my friends. He always finds a way to bless me, even in the smallest of details that I sometimes take for granted because I don't thank him enough. It's the not knowing that the bill is going to get paid or it's not knowing how your friend's going to be okay, or not knowing if you're going to do well on that math test or that history test, it's, and then getting the thing back and seeing that you did a lot better than you thought you did on those tests, or the bill was paid by someone blessing you. It's these small little things that we just take for granted sometimes. And church, I don't want to be someone who takes the little things for granted. I want to bless him in the little, I want to bless him in the big, and I want to bless him in between because he deserves it. He deserves the praise. He deserves the thanksgiving. And so for me, it's realizing that. It's, going through, it's not going through the motions of, all right, I read my Bible today. Thank you, Lord, for every blessing. It's actually having conversations with Him. It's thanking Him for this thing. It's thanking Him for that thing. It's thanking Him for this. It's thanking Him for things that haven't happened yet because I know He's going to be faithful and just because His promises are true and they're yes and amen. That's right. Mm. Reach it. 
And so one of the life verses that I hang on to, that I've always hung on to, is James 1, through, James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it great joy, my brothers, whenever you experience various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, but endur- endurance must do its complete work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. You see, those circumstances that you go through, they don't define you. We acknowledge that God is in, when we acknowledge that God is in control of those situations, breakthrough can happen in our lives. Because when we look for the joy and we can see the joy, or even start to believe that, all right, Lord, you're bigger than this. Yes, I know I'm going through, I'm not seeing it right now, but I know that you are good. I know you got me, and I know I can keep moving forward. Yes, I know it, sometimes it's harder than it looks to believe that because some of us have gone through lives that it's one thing after another. But we all have gone through times of good and we've always looked to God for the answer. And so when we look through the circumstances that we go through, we know that the Lord is bigger than all of them. And so why not look for the joy? Right? Why not consider it great joy when we go through these trials? Because we all go through trials. The Lord never said that this life was going to be easy. He never did. We were going to be mocked. We were going to be disrespected. We were going to be because we believe in Him. And He, was, he went through all that. And so for me, when I go through this scripture, it always hangs on true. Because do I allow the circumstances in my life to steal my joy? Or my, is my joy bigger and greater than that? And lately, my joy has been taken away. My joy has been taken away by the circumstances that I've been going through. It's being stressed out at work. It's trying, it's being stressed out in a workplace sometimes. And for me, I have to be constantly reminded of my, I need to be a lighthouse there. I do. And so I can't allow my joy to be stolen from me. Because my joy is greater and it needs, to be, it needs to shine brighter than my circumstances. It needs to be, when I get stressed out, is my first initial thing is to yell or scream or just get stressed out. Or is it to be like, okay, Lord, take a deep breath and say, all right, Lord, you're in control. Because it's handing off the control to the Lord and saying, Lord, you got it. Because me, I can't do it. I can't do it on my own strength. I need you. I need you to remind me of the joy that I have. Because the joy that I have needs to be shared through all the circumstances, through all the difficult times, because you are greater than it. Because we shouldn't allow the smallest of things to steal a joy in the world. Because we are called to be lights of the world. And we allow the smallest of things to affect us and get us upset. We don't always show Jesus to the people around us. And that could be our only moment to plant a seed in someone's life. So how you respond to people and how you show you... When you're going through these difficult times, your response could mean everything. Because you could run into someone that you could just meet for a second. But how are you showing... Are you showing God's love through that? Or are you allowing the circumstances to, na- to navigate through your life and become a negative person? Because I don't want to be a negative person. I want to always spread the love and joy that I have in my heart because I know my Savior died for me on the cross. And I want to show that to everyone that I, go- that I meet. I don't want my circumstances to be the one to define my interaction with someone just because I might be having a bad day. I want that love and joy to... F- for everybody to feel when I'm talking to them. Are we thanking God for all the blessings in our lives right now? Or are we dwelling in the negative of our past? Of what is going on in our lives right now that we forget that God got us through it before and He'll do it again? Are we thanking God right now for the blessings in our lives? Or are we so caught up in the past that it gave it are we thanking God for the blessings right now in our lives? Or are we so caught up in the past that the past is in control of our lives right now? Amen. 
that right there. is a powerful statement because if we allow our past to control our lives, we'll never move forward. We'll never move forward because we'll be so caught up in making a mistake that we'll never grow as a person because we never allow God to be in control in that circumstance. When we allow our negative, our past, all the things that, all the shame, all the guilt that we feel, if we don't allow God to be in control of that and go through us and cleanse us, We'll never move forward. And we'll always wonder why our person next to us or the person that's a little bit younger, a little bit older, is moving forward in life while we're still standing here wondering, God, what, what's going on? It's to that point where you acknowledge God and say, God, yeah, I know I've messed up. I have know I've gone through, I've done some terrible things. But my past is not going to define me any longer. You know who's going to define me? You are. Because you are the one who died on the cross for my sins. You washed over my sins. You covered me in your blood. And you made me new. You made me white as snow. Amen. And so, Lord I, Lord, I just pray right now. For anyone who's feeling the guilt or the shame or the weight of what they've done in their past. Lord, I just ask that you would just cover them with your blood to make them white. And to know that... Their circumstances or their past does not define them any longer, but you define them because they are children of God. They are sons and daughters of the Lord Most High. And so, Lord, I just ask that you just speak new blessings and new callings and new passions into their lives right now, Father, and that you would continue to bless them as you have blessed me and you have blessed all these people in here, Lord. And I just ask that you just show them if there's any areas that they have yet to hand you over the control of, Father. In your name, amen. <sighs> because He is bigger than all our problems. Because to Him, they are so small. You see, He is the God who is all-powerful. All our problems to Him seem small. But to us, Something as we can't find our favorite shoes or we can't find our sweater that we're wearing. For us, that can cause us to have a really bad day. For God, he just looks down at us and he goes, that's what you're worried about? Like, come on, guys. Like, there's other things to be worried about. But the thing is, when you're worried, you need to cast them on, God, on the Lord. When you have these burdens, when you're carrying the weight of the world or you feel like you need to fix everything, that's me. I, like to, I need to fix everything sometimes. And so when I hear a problem, I need to allow God to be the one to fix it, not me. And so for me, it's realizing that God is bigger than my problems. He is. I can't fix all my problems. And the Lord never intends me to fix my problems. And so I need to allow God the whole control of all the problems that I face because he's bigger than my problems. Another scripture verse we're going to look at this morning is Philippians 2, 5-8. through 8. Make your own attitude that of Christ Jesus, who, existing in the form of God, did not consider equality with God as something to be used for his own advantage. Instead, he exemplified himself by assuming the form of a slave, taking on the likeness of man, and when he had come as a man in his external form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. You see, Christ Jesus had an attitude of obedience. He didn't complain about the circumstances or the calling that he had on his life. His calling was to die for all of us. He didn't complain once. So why do we complain when we are going through different little things that get on our nerves? Or why do we complain when things don't go our way? Or the person next to us gets a raise, why are we envy of that? Do we not know that our raise will come? That sometimes our raise isn't here on this earth, but it's up there? Or the person next to us got the great news and, or got a, the news that their family has been restored, but we've been praying for ours. Do you know that 
God's timing is His timing, and we just need to keep being patient. And for me, when I look at this passage of Scripture, it's it's all about obedience. It's about obedient to the calling. And yeah, God, Jesus could have complained. He could have. He could have been like, Father, I don't want to do that. I, I'm, I, it's too big. It's too, it's too much. I can't carry the whole weight of the world, all the sin on my shoulders. I can't do it. But he didn't complain. He didn't. Because he loved us so much. Because he knew his calling. And he didn't complain, even though the circumstances could have been that. He could have easily complained. I know if I was in his shoes, I don't know if I wouldn't have complained. But I'm so glad Jesus is the one that died on the cross and not me, because I couldn't have done it. And so for me, it's realizing that these circumstances, they don't, con- they don't control our lives, our attitude towards them, and our response to them. How do we respond to the circumstances? Do we allow them to build, keep building up, or are we facing them head on? Kind of like what Pastor Joe spoke last week. Are we facing our giants head on? Are we running from them? Are we facing our giants head on? Or are we running from them? Because our giants and our difficulties, they could go hand in hand because they could be the same. One of the biggest scriptures that have got me through a lot is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It's trust in the Lord with all your heart and not relying on your own understanding, thinking about him in all your ways, and he will guide you on the right paths. For me, it's trusting the Lord with all my heart, with everything that I got. Because I don't want to rely on my own understanding, because I've done that in my, I've done that. I went away from the calling, and I kind of gave it up. A little story that I'll share real quick is, right before I went to school, I ended up going through a really duff, difficult time. Um, my dad lost his job. I decided to work two jobs, make extra money for my family and support my family because I thought that was the best thing that I could do. I took a year back and I didn't go to college right away because I wanted to help my family. And so I lost friendships, I lost relationships just because I was working too much and I couldn't invest. I stopped going to church. I just, I couldn't do it all. And so for me, it was realizing where God was in the midst of it. Because through these difficult times that my family was going through, I stepped up. I was like, all right, I'll just work extra money. I'll work 40, I'll work 80 hours a week just because I have to. And so my school suffered. Everything kind of suffered around me. And I'm like, God, where are you? Where are you through these? Where are you through these difficult times? Where are you? Because I don't know if we're going to have enough money to pay the rent. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do all this. But as I'm going through these, God blessed me with people blessing me. He gave the, the church family helped out. I had friends who were helping me. I got promotions at work. I got raises at work that I didn't even know about. And so when these circumstances don't look bright, God's light always shines brighter. And so for me, it's realizing that I need to just trust the Lord. Because I didn't know if I was going to go to school. Because I was like, how can I leave my family when they're going through all the suffering that they're going through financially? And I heard a voice, I was at camp, and I heard a voice. It says, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Are you going to trust me to know that I got everything under control? Or are you going to keep wanting control of everything, doing it all on your own? For me, it's realizing that I had to hand it over. And as I handed over to God and allowed God to control my life and kind of rededicated it, my wife to the Lord that's when the breakthrough happened my dad got a better paying job I was able to go to school I was able to get trained I was able to get a degree to do what I'm doing now it all works out God's will always works out 
even through these difficult times that we go through, church, God's love and His purpose and the calling on your life, they always shine brighter than these circumstances that we go through. And here are some practical steps that, to gain a thankful heart in these difficult times. Remind yourself that joy is coming your way, that these difficult times don't last forever. And God is waiting for you to hit the key so that He can take them off your shoulders. Because we get in a routine and put ourselves in situations sometimes that God never intended us to be in because we take control. Because we take control instead of allowing God to lead and being thankful for where He is taking us. There's so many times where God's taking us one direction and we're like, no, God, I want to go over here or I want to go over here. My friends are going over here. Why am I going over here? Why am I going over there? Just trust the Lord. Just trust the Lord through those times because what your friends might be going or what your family might be doing over here or loved ones might be doing over there, He might be protecting you for something that's on this path. It's okay to be a little different. It's okay. And another practical step we can take is thank God daily for the blessings in your life, no matter the size, because He deserves to be praised in everything and given the glory because God is bigger than our problems. Because to Him, everyone, the problems, I know I've already said this, but the problems to Him are so small. They are. And so are we, are we laying them down, saying, Lord, take them. And then trust the Lord through the difficulties because He will never leave you nor forsake you. Meaning God will provide a way. He'll always provide a way. He'll always bless you with your friends, a family member, sometimes financially. Sometimes that word of encouragement that you don't know that you need. Always expect God because you never know how He's going to show up. But He is. He always does. It might be in the form of someone after church coming up to you saying, hey, that was, how did your week go? Or a phone call or a text message saying, how's your week going? Don't be afraid to share how your week's going with people because they want to be there to encourage you. But if you never open up to people or never allow them in, how can you get healing? Because sometimes you just need that simple saying, can I just vent to you? Or hey, I had a tough week, can I talk to you? So church, be open to reaching out to the people that you haven't reached out to in a long time. Or friends that seem to be good on the inside, but make sure you're sending a text message saying, hey, or calling them up, or going to their house and just checking on them. Because you never know what people are going through, because sometimes they don't like to share it. So in conclusion, don't let your, don't, don't let your difficulties define who you are. And give thanks this week in all things. And not allow the little things to steal your joy, praising Jesus in every circumstance, so that your heart does not become hardened, that your difficulties begin to run in your, over your life. Hey, wasn't that good for this first time here? Awesome. I just want to say, Patrick, it's an amazing honor. And I am so thankful for you. When I had you preach this time, I had had zero trepidation or fear. Because of, I know who you are. And uh, God has had his hand on you. All right, can we just all stand up and let's let's end this service in, in prayer? Let's lift our hands to heaven and just be grateful. Let's act on what Patrick just preached from the Word of God. Let's be grateful in all circumstances. Let's just tell the Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's all do it out loud and make some noise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our trials. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. We just praise you in all circumstances. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that there's bigger and better coming up. Thank you, Lord. That you're with us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just bless you in the name of the Lord. And uh, be grateful and thankful. Amen.